Hello, this is Coffee and Bonsai with Tom, and this is Tree DJ1 for Dwarf Jade 1, or maybe I'll call it PA1 for uh, Portia Lucaria Afro 1. Um, and um, this is my first video. This is actually my first Portia Lucaria that um, I acquired about a year and a half ago. I'll try to get more details and put. Um, uh some pictures when i first got it this this tree um, i bought it from a um from kind of a known uh bonsai supplier i don't want to name the name the names because the tree was i mean i don't know if it's a great tree now but it was quite uh it wasn't great when i got it it was all dried up and probably three times this size um and uh you know, it had a lot of problems, which I've been slowly working on um, uh, over time. But let's give it a spin around. You can see it. I've kind of been working on it a bit. Um, I've got some wire on it to bring the branches down. Um, I'll talk about the tree's issues uh, in a minute or two, or kind of where I want to where I want to take it from here. But I've had a lot of fun. This, like as I said, this is my first introduction to um, dwarf jade or uh, Portulacaria afra, and um, you know I had done bonsai for about fifteen years, and then I sort of uh, fell out of it, for the lack of a better term. Uh, kids come along, and life has a way of interfering, and it's a hobby that requires a tremendous amount of effort and dedication to keep your trees healthy, and. I was not really able to do that anymore, so I took a, I don't know, a 15 year break. So I was doing it for 10 to 15 years, took 10 to 15 years off, uh, slowly gave away uh, most of my trees, um, and then uh, I've kind of gotten gotten back into it. And uh, you know, no one was really using um, dwarf jade uh, when I was doing bonsai before, at least no one I was aware of. Um, and you know it was a bit before YouTube and people sharing, so it's you know I'm sure it, it was the case, but probably not um, to the degree that you see people doing it now, um, for sure. But um, I mean, having had a lot of experience with trees, and all my trees previously were all outdoor trees. I live in Seattle, get a lot of rain. It's it's like a perfect environment for you know it's kind of a mild climate. Our winters aren't too cold. Um, it's kind of fall a lot. We get very hot um, summers in August, but it's, you know, it's pretty easy to keep the trees um, healthy as long as you're using the right um, soil. So I had all kinds of trees, different varieties, and uh, really enjoyed it. But I honestly feel like I've really been, since I've gotten back into it, I've been concentrating on these trees because uh, I think they deliver a lot of what the bonsai hobbyist is looking for. You've got, um, they're easy to take care of. Um, they're fast growing. Um, I have uh, indoor lights set up. You can sort of see a bit of it off to the right there perhaps, which I'll, I'll show you in a, in a later video. But, you know, they're very easy to keep healthy and, and they really put on a lot of growth, um, both under lights indoors and particularly outside uh, in the summertime. And you can just work on them year round. I mean, I, um, you know, a typical tree, you're sort of doing some pruning to it. I don't know, maybe twice a year, maybe three times. Um, you know, these things, I can prune them every couple of weeks. Uh, they really put on a lot of growth and a lot of that depends on, um, you know, how much you fertilize them, how much light you give them, um, the soil you have them in, and but you know what I'm saying is, especially for the beginning uh, bonsai um, artist, uh, hobbyist, however you want to classify it, uh, they're a very rewarding tree and they're very forgiving, and I really recommend them uh, to um, all kinds of folks. So um, in this series of videos, I kind of want to go through my collection and I'll name each one of these trees and I'm, I mean I'm just showing them as they are. I pruned this one not that long ago uh, but I would like to um, you know over time I will continue to um, 
show the trees as I work on them. Uh, I'll try to do that and I will have some coffee. I kind of like to use my coffee mug as a as a comparison so you can see how tall the tree is. This is probably, I have really small trees because they don't have a lot of space. Um, so uh, this is one of the kind of larger ones I have actually. Uh, so I have a lot of small trees and if you like that then I think uh, this will be a good experience. Um, you no doubt can probably hear my dog in the background. Uh, she <laughs> really likes a lot of attention so she's not up here with me and she is expressing her, her uh, you know discontent with that decision. Um, so I'll try to keep the background noise to a minimum. So I've zoomed in a little here to talk a bit about the tree. Um, as I said, I, I got this tree online and you can see um, it's got very much like bar branches for one thing. And, and you know, there's one here. And this was actually a new leader that I created when I got the tree. Um, you can see this cut point right here. Um, let's see. I can get it where you can see it. Yeah, it's probably the best angle right there. You can see it goes from here all the way down to here. It was a major chop. And it was kind of interesting because I went, you can see I cut through one, two, three segments diagonally. And uh, it's totally healed now. I mean, it looks like actual bark there. It didn't rot out. In fact, this was new, a new um, shoot that came up and I let it grow to try to heal that. Um, but, you know, I, I mentioned a bit about the condition of the tree when I when I got it and um, yeah it was uh, it was not a great specimen in fact I, I was I initially thought I'd been ripped off or something because uh, I mean no pruning had been done to the tree at all it was basically a straight branch with bar branches turned um, uh, every you know uh, I guess that's what 90 degrees all the way up and it was probably two to three times its um, current height um, and it was quite you know dried out uh, it also came in a really bad soil um, in fact I started taking care of the tree as I said this was my first push of the carrier afra so obviously I was watering it too much so my recommendation would be whenever you get a new any tree. I don't care if it's a Portucaria, Afro, or any sort of tree, I would immediately um, repot it to better soil. Um, that, at least that's been my experience because you, you know you don't really know where it's coming from, particularly if you're buying it on the internet. They're probably not using the best soil and you know ideally you want something so that I can overwater it and it's not going to be a death sentence for the tree, particularly with with jades. Um, that is the number one killer of them. So I had some problems and you can see it's kind of, uh, there was actually some rot on this section, um, which has now come back, uh, which I was happy about. Um, but I didn't completely, uh, I didn't completely repot it in the way that I normally would like I usually totally bare root take everything out wash the roots put it in new soil because I wasn't very familiar with this species at that point I wouldn't hesitate now because you can you could basically you know cut this off at the base and with proper care it would grow new roots uh, I don't really recommend that I think it's a radical procedure but it, it um, if you know what you're doing uh, um, it works so I think when I repot it this summer, I don't want to repot it now because we're sort of in the middle of winter and even with grow lights, um, it works reasonably well. I have done that, but I tend to want to have warmer weather for that kind of heavy work. Um, it's not that these, I think it would be fine. It would just take longer to recover. And the thing that I've discovered, particularly with the roots in these dwarf jades is they really like warm weather, so you really want it to be 70 or above, round the clock, and they will recover quite well from just about anything that you do to them, aside from overwatering. Um, so yeah, let me zoom in a little on those roots you can see. So some of the problem areas of this tree 
the root base it's not great you know like I said I um, I definitely want to do some work on that at some point uh, I didn't really dig in too close to see what's under there my feeling is not much I'm not actually if you look at the top of the tree as well I'm actually not particularly um, happy with the styling uh, when I evaluated the tree and thought okay what, what what do I do with this basically it was uh, well kind of overgrown and with these bar branches I just didn't really see a lot of options for the tree so it was always been a problem tree for me from day one and so I thought well I'm just going to try to do a ball slash broom style and just embrace these bar branches and see where it goes and so that's what I've been doing uh, and it's been a good experience I've been you know learning how to take care of this kind of tree and I've had a lot of fun in fact uh, it's my collection now has grown I actually don't know how many uh, dwarf jades I have we'll find out when I <laughs> as I progress in the video but uh, it's probably quite a bit you know I know from when I had bonsai before I always used to tell people oh I have about a hundred trees which I think is a common thing uh, with bonsai hobbyists but we typically have more than we think uh, it's kind of necessary to have a lot of trees because you want to be doing a lot of work it's probably I'm finding now that I've acquired quite a few of dwarf jades you don't need as many because they really keep you quite busy uh, but let's continue looking at this tree. I think the trunk's okay. So I, I, I do think that my uh, plan for this is to really kind of keep, you know, keep doing what I have been doing with the tree and just go with this um, ball shape. I would like to get some branches out here and have it really be, you know, sort of squatter but wider so that it comes out over the pot. Um, more and when I repot it I'll take a look at the roots and see what I can do there I may uh, I'm hoping that there's something better under this I'd like to get rid of that so but you know if, if, if there's some decent roots under there and I can raise it up a little bit I can cut off these pieces that I don't particularly care for um, I put on these guy wires to sort of pull these branches down like basically all the the four primary bar branches that I decided to keep um, to get them a bit more horizontal so I may play with that more in order to splay the tree out I have uh, I've had very bad luck with wire on on these trees so I have I have it wrapped with some rubber here um, but I still keep an eye on it um, these trees I mean basically they're kind of like a reservoir all the leaves are full of water the trunks full of water so if you water them well they literally swell both the leaves and the trunk and I just have found it to be a bad combination with wiring um, every tree that I've put wire on has been you know quite scarred by the experience and you know they do they do grow quickly and so they kind of bulge out of that but you know the human eye like you know if you see a line kind of going around even though you know this may swell and you see it a bit less you you know you still see it so and I've also found there's not a lot of benefits to wiring on these because you know all this ramification like if you look at these I just sort of cut them right I mean you let them grow you cut them down to one to two you pick the direction you want let them grow cut them down you just keep doing that and they grow so quickly um, wiring is like too much work it's just easier to use clip and grow uh, with these and it's very rewarding so that's what I've been doing and uh, you know it's worked it's worked quite well so far um, and the soil I this is a very coarse soil like I said I wasn't sure what I was doing when I got these initially I water this tree um, in my indoor setup probably a little bit every other day and then I sort of deeply water it um, maybe once a week 
and that seems to be keeping it healthy. I am surprised I have to water water it that much because I don't know if you noticed when I zoomed in, you do see there's some wrinkling on the leaves, which I sort of I'd rather have a little bit of that rather than risk root rot. So that's kind of how I maintain these. But you know, you'd probably get even more growth if I if I weren't doing that. And my watering can, I use a, a sprayer that uh, you know, it's like a two-gallon sprayer that has um, fertilizer mixed in, so they get a little bit of fertilizer every time. But I think the next time I repot, I'll add a little bit. This is basically, you know, I mean, it has pine bark in it, which I guess is technically organic, but, um, you know, it's not like it's soil. I think, I think these deal with pine bark quite well. I think I might add a little bit more pumice or akadama or something like that to try to make it so that I, I think ideally I'd want to be watering about once every four days. Um, and you know, just for the, to, to keep the consistency of the, the soil for the tree and have it just be more, um, static. I think that would be better. So I'm going to experiment with some of that, but I've basically been using the same mix for everything and they all do quite well. I just tend to water some of them once a day even, and they grow and I get a lot of growth that way. But I think I would like to, uh, particularly since they're succulents, that just seems like a lot to me. So um, I'll keep you posted on that. So yeah, future plans for this tree, a repot. Um, you know, I'll probably pick a different pot for it. I think if we, let me just look at the pot a little. This was a pot that I had that I just kind of put it in. I kind of like this, like it's like a crackle, but it's like a matte crackle. And you can see it's got some patina on the top. This is a pot, most of my pots actually are I don't know, 30, 40, maybe. Yeah, I mean, they're the pots I had when I was acquired when I initially started into this. And I have bought a few, but I, I, mean, I just had so many, I didn't really need to. I, I never got rid of my pots, even though I got rid of a lot of trees. Um, I kept uh, most of the pots. And, uh, and I'm glad I did because, you know, they're hard to come by and, you know, yeah, I really like, this is a nice deep pot, which is kind of good for a tree that you're unsure the care requirements on, which is why I, I chose this pot so that I could keep it alive. Um, but now that I know what I'm doing, I could easily cut the, you know, cut the depth of this down to, to half. And I think it would be a little more fitting with a broom style tree, but, but, you know, I kind of, I don't know, this tree's kind of grown on me. It, it, it went from something that I really uh, didn't care for <laughs> at all to, you know, one that I'm kind of looking forward to uh, working with in the, in the future. Um, I think I've got, it's a little bit busy on the top, um, but, you know, I've been trying a lot of experiments to see how it grows and how it fills in and how it responds to these guy wires. Um, so, you know, I, as I gain more knowledge about the tree, I will, um, I will, uh, you know, be bolder with kind of what, what I'm doing with it, but I'm having a lot of fun with these. And like I said, I really, I really enjoy this kind of tree and I look forward to, you know, making these videos. I'm sort of, at least at the moment, uh, due to health reasons, kind of semi-retired. So I have a lot of time and I have always enjoyed bonsai and coffee. And so I thought, um, you know, this will be a, a fun thing for me to do uh, while I'm recovering and I will go from there. So my hope is to, you know, make these kinds of videos periodically when I work on these trees. And it's also nice to have a history of like what's been done to them. And I look forward to making more of these videos and I hope you enjoy them. Thanks.